Hi, I'm Patrick, and this is the Maki Blog. We're here at CES 2024. The next company we're going to check out is Eaton. They haven't traditionally been known as like an EV charging related company, but now that's about to change. So let's step inside and find out more. So this is Nick from Eaton. He's going to walk us through some of the EV offerings that they have here uh, at CES 2024. Yeah, absolutely. Happy to do so. So we've got a couple of exciting things in the market. Industry first. This is the most exciting today that I'd love to show you. This is our Smart Breaker EV Charger. Uh, there's a couple of things that makes this unique, right? When you look at it, it looks like a standard, Just nice little pretty yeah, EV box, right? But when you open up the guts, uh, that's the exciting portion. When you open this cover up, you see it's actually a breaker integrated EV charger. What's right. unique about this is that it gives you a lot of flexibility on that installation and the use case for this charger. Most of the time when you've got an EV charger that looks like this, You've got to have ground fault protection upstream. You've got to have a breaker in a panel that's right. feeding that charger. Um, what this does is it allows us to build all that functionality straight into the breaker and it saves the contractor and the user a lot of money and in installation uh, complications. Right? Super cool. So this particular unit, it's a 40 amp, 7.7 .7 kilowatt offering. It can go straight into a panel, which I can show you here in right. a second, or it can go in a nice little enclosure. Uh, the cable can go up to 250 feet away from the charger. So in situations where A, there's not enough room in the panel for the four pole breaker mm -hmm. that goes in there, um, you can install it in this nice little load center, or if it's too far away from the app, uh, from the breaker itself, right. then we can just put it in the enclosure and go from there. This will all come bundled with our uh, home application called Bright Layer Home, where you can intelligently remote on and oh, off nice. operate the breaker. Um, you can uh, get any failure alerts. So if there's a ground fault in the system, if there's overcurrent protection events, the Bright Layer Home will allow you to see all of that. Now you can't from the home app. Uh, untrip the breaker, right? So if something trips, it's something yeah. that maybe we need to look you into. You do need it, to look right? at that, yeah. <laughs> um, but remote on and off capability. So think if your utility has peak use rates, right? Where you've got maybe right. between 6 p.m. and 9 p.m. You shouldn't charge because it's really expensive. The breaker can intelligently take care of that for you. So the user doesn't have to remember that every single time. Okay. When you plug in, if it's between those rates, if you set that rule in the app, it won't charge. And you can set schedules and everything using the exactly. app. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And as a company, we're working a lot on AI intelligence as well in the future, where maybe perhaps the breaker will intelligently learn your habits and know that, okay, sure. you're always home between this hour and it's cheap electricity. Let's charge because maybe at nine you go to the gym and so you need to make sure you have So you don't have to charge. think about it. You exactly. don't have to like... Fiddle with schedules. Exactly. Again. Hopefully yeah. we'll learn that. So that's not the case today, but that's something we're working on. Now, this one is 40 amp. Is there a uh, capability to go up to any higher than that? We do. We can go up to the commercial voltages or uh, wattages of 19.2 kilowatts, okay. but that is not the breaker form factor. We've, okay. gone, we've done a lot of market research. Uh, we were in the EV game a long, long time ago, way before right. anybody else was. And so we learned a lot of lessons from that venture. Uh, and 7.7 .7 kilowatts seems to be a nice uh, spot yeah. for the residential market. Yeah, I... I uh, even us charging at home, it's like I derate my charger because it's like I don't need it. So exactly. uh, it's just basically it's easier on the circuitry. It's easier on the battery in your car. Easier on the battery. Yeah. Exactly. So 7.7 so. .7 kilowatts is a good solution for our residential Very market. Cool. So that's where that's, this one is at. Yeah. All right. Can yeah. we move on? Absolutely. Yeah. Let, let me show you uh, an inter interesting use case for these guys. So obviously in the residential space, a single breaker is more than enough. Right. But think about from a light commercial multifamily type of application. Right. Right. Sometimes you have maybe 10 units. Um, that require yeah. that type of charging, right? And so what's brilliant about the breaker format is that you don't actually need to go in a load center. Right. right? You can actually go straight into a commercial style panel board where you can have up to 10 of these in one location. This is a brilliant innovation for a couple of different reasons. Yeah. Number one, imagine the network connectivity that needs to be accessible for a light commercial installation. Right. Office, right. You've got to run a hotspot out to every single one of those locations at the point of use, right? With a traditional EV charger. You With do. this, you can have all of the breakers in a panel, one Wi-Fi hotspot. The site host has one place to troubleshoot if anything is wrong. If any of these trip, it's all in one panel. Right. It simplifies that process a lot. It saves a lot of money on the, even on the consultancy side. You don't need to hire a network. Uh, engineer right. to come in and figure out how you're going to get connectivity to everything. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, and, and this could even be for like a residential person that has a detached garage. Sure. They Absolutely. They could put the smarts in their circuit panel where they may have exactly. Wi-Fi and then the detached garage. Yep. Just yeah. And the connection is really flexible. You can either terminate straight off the panel like we're showing here, or right. you can run that junction box up to wherever you need it, up to 250 feet away from the breaker and then terminate your cable there. That's really so cool. It's, it's a brilliant solution. Nobody else in the market has anything like it. We really think it's going to make a big impact in the industry. That's super cool. Yeah. And, you know, we started with the residential. This is getting more into like uh, 
multifamily, multifamily like healthy, yeah. but you also do a lot of stuff on the fleet side, right? Absolutely. Sure if you know Eaton, uh, you know yeah. anything that touches power all the way from, again, big industrial yeah. microgrids all the way to residential wiring devices. But yeah, we, on we were, the EV side, yeah, we, we have were just talking. Uh, I did, uh, I do a lot of IT stuff. So I know Eaton from doing server room management yeah. and server room power and server yeah. room backup su- uh, power right. supplies. So yeah, any big green box, black box, uh, gray box, yeah. more than likely we manufacture it and yeah, involved exactly. in it somewhere. Yeah. And on the EV side, we're stepping into that same format as well. So here we have a really exciting offering. It's an overhead busway charger. Right. So if you're not familiar with busway, it's really expensive to run conduit and cabling for high power applications, mm-hmm. right? Super expensive. Actually, our busway is a really competitive solution for that. You actually run metal bus bars overhead and you're in installations in industrial and commercial settings mm-hmm. um, that allow you to save a lot of money on conduit, on labor. And it's a much yeah. easier way to deliver power throughout an and industrial. It's, it's it's way more flexible too. Way more flexible, yeah. You're not like, well, we put the outlet in here and that's where it's... It's exactly. going to be for the next 20 yep. years. You can have plugs wherever you want them. You can have provisions. Yeah. So if you're expecting your industri- industrial installation to grow, you can add more devices. And that's where we come in on the EV charging side. What we decided is, in, in doing a lot of market research, talking to a lot of fleet managers, talking to a lot of folks that are electrifying these big industrial vehicles, right? Think package deliveries, right? Think right. buses. Um Floor space is an incredibly important asset to them, right? right. Not only from uh, an asset perspective of needing the floor space to put packages and, and cars in the building, but also from a safety thing, right? So imagine big port in place EV chargers in a location where people are moving in and out 24-7, right? right? That's a big safety concern. And so what yeah. we wanted to do is bring an overhead solution to that industry. And so that's where this came from. This is actually a 19.2 kilowatt AC charger for fleet applications. So imagine right. again, big packaging company, they've got 30 trucks they need to charge. You run that busway right overhead, you've got retractable J1772 connectors, future will have NACS, um, and you've got none of those concerns that you have with a traditional yeah. EV charger. And you mentioned NACS, mm-hmm. uh, so for like the residential, are you going to have NACS available? For Absolutely, it? right. Today, the only manufacturer shipping with NACS is Tesla. Right. And they they send you with the adapters, right? right? So today, we haven't quite responded to the market, but we will have NACS retrofit kits as well as native shipping NACS ports in the future. So if I had my Eaton today, I could yeah. actually get a retrofit kit. Absolutely. And that's very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, we have uh, J1772 now, but... Maybe in two years, I have an NACS exactly. car. I can yeah. just buy a okay, And everybody will cool. eventually switch to the standard. It's been announced. Yep. Everybody's kind of expecting that. So we are as well. Um, the problem is, is it's not really adapted to the market yet. Nobody is shipping Nobody. with NACS. So today, we're still shipping with J1772, but we're prepared to make that shift when we need to. And you're higher power than just level two. I see a, a DC yeah, fast Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we can talk that as well. So um, again, obviously, AC level two is an excellent... Uh, a use for residential like commercial trickle charging kind of as it's known in the right. industry right um, but we do have our dc uh, charging solutions as well so this is a, a 50 to 150 kilowatt dc fast charger right. um, what's interesting about this offering is that we're running into a lot of use cases where people want to put in a dc fast charger but there's not enough room at the substation right the utility right. can't support a 200 kilowatt charger so what's cool about our offering is it's modular so you can start with a 50 kilowatt version of the charger but all the provisions are there for it to grow with your service, right? right. So let's say um, you only have three people that need to use it, right? You don't need 200 kilowatts of power there, right? It's a more right. expensive solution, right? But as people adopt, as the mass adoption and transition to the EV market happens, you're going to need to grow with that service, right. right? And so that's where those provisions come into place. You buy a module, you upgrade your charger, and you go from there. Yeah, I can see a lot of businesses also like sort of want to dip their toe in it. Like, let's put in a 50 kilowatt charger. And then all of a sudden it's like yeah. people are asking, can we get, you know, can you do faster? Exactly. And you just buy more modules. So that's yep. very cool. Exactly. So. Yeah. And we will have a 200 kilowatt offering in the future. We've heard a lot of requirement or needs yes. for that in the market. So we'll continue to adapt and learn as, as, as we grow. But today that's what is available. And these are all have all the commercial bell and whistles that you're looking for. You've got RFID access control. So if you're behind the gate, right, you just right. want your employees to charge. Again, think fleet, maybe some uh, long distance, short uh, or high repetition delivery cycles where you need a DC fast charger to be able to charge in an hour. Right. right? We've got that often. So maybe only the employee can scan in and charge versus just the general public. Nice. But if you want them in the public, right, so think highway, think really gas station replacements, right? right. We've got payment processing options as well. Worse. Yeah. Got to get the money. Yeah. Got to pay for all that charging. Exactly. And I exactly. see, uh, is this a commercial? Uh, yeah, yeah, two? we can talk those. So those are, once you need a, a little bit more than 7.7 kilowatts, right? We've got our building and building pro offerings. Um, and so these two particular, and uh, we can step around, apologies. So for our building and building pro offerings, we've got an 11.5 kilowatt option as well as a 19.2. 
Nice. So from a, a device standpoint, this is actually identical to that overhead, right? Okay. It's just in a nice little package, right? So more what you're expecting. We've got single-sided pedestals, dual-sided pedestals. Again, really flexible solutions for whatever right. your installation looks like. Um, but again, all the bells and whistles from the commercial standpoint. So RFID access control, right. QR web app payment processing options. You've got e-stops. You've got all kinds of things uh, that are more tailored towards the commercial market. Yeah, that sounds great. Well, thank you so much for the tour of everything yeah. that Eaton's Absolutely. doing at the EV world. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're very much appreciated. No problem. Great All to right. meet you guys. Good luck. Have fun at the show. All right. Thanks. Absolutely. Okay. As a bonus, this isn't EV charging related, but there's a lot of other stuff that Eaton is doing that's related to EVs. Uh, and now we're here with Mark. He's going to go over some of the, the cool things they're working on here. Yeah. I'm Mark Van Wingenen. I'm a product strategy manager in our power distribution stuff. And I can... Um, We'll kind of give you an overview of all the co components that we sell inside the vehicle. So starting at kind of the back of the vehicle, we have our traction inverter, which is in production in Europe. We also sell uh, reduction gearing that goes directly into the motor inverter uh, combination. That's also in production. Uh, and and then e have a full differential. It, there is a, there's an open differential on that one. Yep. Nice. Uh, we also have a full suite of torque products, including locking and, and limited slip differentials for, uh, for electric vehicles. So uh, we also have uh, bus bars, uh, terminals, and connectors that um, that go inside the battery pack. Uh, a lot of from uh, from the 12 volt side as well as the high voltage. And then uh, my product line, which is the uh, goes inside the battery pack for power distribution and protection, uh, particularly uh, the the brake tour product, which is a uh, it's a it's a combination uh, protection and switching device for inside the battery pack. It replaces a, a, a traditional thermal fuse or a pyrotechnic switch. Yeah. And the he, big advantage there is uh, that we we can be resettable in the case of, a, a, of an incident. Um, you know, if, if there's a low speed impact that sets off the airbags, uh, we're not going to, you don't have to open the battery pack to replace the pyro that would be triggered in that situation. Um, That's really cool because uh, there, there was sort of a bit of a famous incident, not a, uh, a collision, but an ID4 charging at a charging station, DC fast charging station, and the fuse or the, the pyro the fuse pyro, yeah. blew. So number one, they were stranded, but the other thing is, is like it scared everybody to parking lot because it's super loud. <laughs> yeah. uh, if I could find the clip, we'll insert that like right now. Oh my God, did you guys hear that? The same thing, ha I have that on video. The same thing happened to me. Yeah, and uh, another thing is that, you know, that that's a, a single device that handles the both both sides. So it replaces two contactors and a pyro, and uh, we're we're really proud of the amount of power that it can handle. So depending on the application and the cooling that you put around it, we can easily handle a 480, 500 kilowatt charging um, for nice. the vehicle. So you know now we're waiting for the infrastructure and the and the vehicle OEMs to catch up. Well, thank you so much for this overview. Um, we'll uh, continue on. Yep. Thank, great, thank you. Just as an add-on, if you guys don't know, I love like all of the smart home technology that's out there. I have a lot of devices. Uh, I'm very interested to check out some of their stuff. They actually have some really interesting things that um, are, are a little bit different. I mean, you, you can see smart outlets from like some other providers as well, but they have one of the first uh, outdoor certified smart outlets. So I wanna check that out. They have like a ceiling fan. A controller unit that I want to check out. Um, and the one that I really am interested in is like smart ambient monitoring. They just have a card on it here, but I think it's uh, really interesting because supposedly like what it'll do is like uh, monitor your house and your patterns of using the smart technology, like the lighting and can sort of detect if there's any air, you know, any issues with that. And what they mean is sort of like if you have like an elderly parent and all of a sudden they're not turning the lights on, you don't have to have like security cameras watching them. You can just go like, hey, they haven't turned the lights on all day. Is something going on with them? So uh, I need to research more about that. Need to research more about this. But uh, if you guys are interested, this is you know something that we would love to cover more as well. So let us know down in the comments if uh, you have any interest in the smart home technology in addition to the EV charging stuff. Okay, so that was a brief introduction to Eaton and some of the EV charging stuff and a little bit of a bonus with the smart home technology. Let us know what you think. Let us know what part of this stuff you want us to cover more of. I'm very interested in learning more about that EV uh, smart charger. Um, we'll try to see if we can do like a full in-depth review on that. Um, but anyways, we have to go on to the next booth. So thank you guys for watching. Thanks to our Patreon members. Their names are going to be scrolling down below our 
whispered, engage and unbridled members. And as then Liv would say, just remember, whatever you drive, however you charge it, or if you have a smart home or not, I don't know. Anyways, enjoy the ride. Bye.